What's going on? Happy Thursday, everybody. Just finished doing the podcast a little while ago. It'll be up tomorrow. I'm actually, well, I got more to do tonight, actually, and then I'll put out tomorrow. I'm going to put out content left and right. Content, 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 content. It, it, it turned out, this is the best era to be doing any sort of media. You know, if you, you have no excuse to do to not do things you love. Honestly, you have no excuse. Like, to me, if you don't do the things you're passionate about, to me, you're a loser. Because, honestly, there's no excuse. You can do it. You can do it. It's out there. You don't need to be, you don't, you don't need to be tied to a media, media, uh, uh, company or whatever to do radio or do video, whatever you mean, or write. You can do it on your own. The time is now to do these kind of things. And I'm grateful for it. You know, so first off, I'm going to make my kid from school, but my other kid, my one-year-old right there, see right there, he's very quiet right now. We won't talk Miami Heat today because he'll, he'll start crying again because he's pissed off this season. I don't blame him either. They, they suck. So, I don't know if you guys have been watching the uh, George Bush farewell tour that's been going on over the last couple, uh, last week for that matter. You know, I don't care what kind of what side of the aisle you are, Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever. I'm an MPA, so whatever. Um, it's very classy to see the way he's being sent off. Um, and again, it, it shows the, the good in this country. You know, sometimes you, you, you could get together and not fight about, over, over things. You know, it, it, I don't know. Like, I, I, there are things that matter, obviously, to, to, to fight about. And I'm not going to even, you know, discuss it here because that's this is not a political podcast. Although I will, once in a while, give my opinion on things that I believe that I should give on. But I do think, you know, seeing, you know, the way he's been sent off. And I don't know. Everybody has their views on, on the Bush family and Bush Sr. For, for, for that matter. I... Don't mind the guy. I actually do like George Bush Senior. To be honest with you, I thought he's a, you know, pretty nice guy from what I've been told. Um, and I know my dad wrote from way back when, um, back in '88. Gets to caucus, and I'm a big American history historian too, especially. Um, and I've always been into presidents since I was a child, since I was like nine years old. So it's, it's, it's always been fascinating to see presidents of the life they lived, and then once they they, they move on from the public life, and then they pass away, and how they received, and the perception, you know. See this, you know. I, and I haven't been to watch everything. I, I did. I see. I did see pieces of uh, George W. Bush's, uh, his son George W.'s uh, eulogy to his father. I thought it was really very classy. Uh, obviously, very good. Um, I mean, it, it's just cool to see it. Watch that. It was very, very classy, very gracious. Um, and again, it, it's just a reminder of the good of America. That we, even though we have so much div- divisiveness in this country, we, we are still good people. There's still, there's still good people out there, you know. And there's still good things that are going on in this country, you know. If you really try hard, I don't. I don't think the, the country is as bad as it, people make it out to be. Sometimes, I think the media makes it worse than it really is. Honestly, people like to scream at that. Whatever, that's fine. Um, but I do think that, that you know, there's more good than bad. Really, in in, in my opinion, you know, I try to I try not to let the media dictate what I think is right and wrong. I'm way too smart for that, and I think people should be should use that to use that logic that you're smarter than what the media feeds you every day. Is there, is there bad things in this country happens? Absolutely, but does it mean that it's it's everybody's everybody is evil? No, everybody's not evil. I'm not evil. I know the fact. My kids are not evil. My wife's not evil. You know, so I wish that we would we lose more logic and and more common sense when it comes to these, these you know looking at things abroad. People are different, yes, but you know everybody everybody as soon as the worst kind, the worst thing, and I get it, but it's just, it's fucked up, but. Seeing the Bush stuff, seeing the Bush farewell, it's it's it's, it's definitely very you know I'm a little emotional too. I mean I didn't cry like that, but um, it was definitely very very nice, very gracious, and um, you know that's all I gotta say about that. Uh, about that going forward, uh, Jaguars Titans tonight. Um, it it's deemed an unwatchable game. It is kind of watchable though, in my opinion, because the Titans are fighting for a playoff spot. They're only a game back in the wild card. Um, and if they win this week, and Baltimore is currently a six seed, if they lose, they you know they pick Kansas City, so it's very very, very uh, possible that may, that may happen. Tennessee's back in the, in the driver's seat um, for the wild card. Actually, no, because Baltimore did beat Tennessee after the year, so te- technically the tiebreaker will, will go to uh, uh, Baltimore. But still, there's something. There's, there's, there's not a game where it's nothing to play for. No, Tennessee is playing for their playoff lives. They can't be trusted, obviously. I mean, they they're, they're not. A, they, they've been so inconsistent all year long that, you know, if they lose this game, it would not surprise me at all. But I'm going to pick Tennessee to win this game because it's, again, a desperate team. Uh, the Jaguars only scored six points last week against Indi- Indianapolis. Even though they, won, they beat Indianapolis, I mean, that's just ridiculous. 
Um, I like the under in the game. I'm not, I'm not betting the game night for the record. But I'll take the under. I'll take the under. Uh, I, think, I think the under is at 37 and a half, I believe. I'll take the under in that one. I, I see it a 17-13 game. Um, I'll take the under in that game. Um, so, but it, it, it is an intriguing game in, in some in some respects because of the fact that Tennessee is playing for the playoff lives. The Jags, I mean, I, th- I thought the Jags quit. And, I mean, look, Cody Kessler's not, not going to do shit. I mean, it, it is what it is. They scored six points in Indianapolis last week. In a win, but still, six points and six points. That's ridiculous. So, Tennessee, if they it, look, Tennessee's beaten, Tennessee's beaten New England this year. They beat Philly when Philly was still playing pretty, pretty, pretty decent. Um, so, Tennessee has, the, has you know, they, they, they'll play the top teams really, really good, and then they'll play like shit against the bottom team. So, I, I, I don't know what to expect this week from the uh, – from Tennessee, but they better win this game because before weeks up in the year, if you want to make the playoffs again, you better make you better win this game. So I'll take Tennessee 17 13 tonight. And if you're a betting man, although I won't bet the game, well, maybe I change my mind, maybe I change my mind later on in the night. But if you're betting the game, I bet the under mostly than um, over anything else. So there's that. Uh, Kevin Durant back in the news. Kevin Durant is a fascinating case study right now. Because Kevin Durant, uh, he, um, I guess, has a problem with LeBron sexuals. And i I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of things that Kevin Durant don't agree with. Kevin Durant, to me, is a bit of a, I don't know, I, I don't know who he is anymore. Because he, he, which Durant is real? Is, is Durant we see in Oklahoma City the real guy? Or is it Durant we see here in Oklahoma State being more abrasive? And, again, three weeks ago he was cussing off a fan on the sideline for telling him to shut, shut the fuck up, watch the game. Then apparently a couple of days ago in Atlanta... He t- did the same thing in, in Atlanta to another fan. I'm not saying he's not right about that, but I, I find Kevin Durant more petty now than he, he ever has been. Well, he was just, he was talking about uh, LeBron and the fact that it might be hard for players, for the Lakers to get a star player because the way the media covers LeBron, the way, you know, just the way that players that play next to LeBron are overly criticized because LeBron because they're playing with LeBron James, which, by the way, as a Heat fan, I, I know all too well. We, I mean, Chris Bosh got the ire of the media down here and nationally too but especially down here and locally too um chris bosh got the ire from a lot of people because he was playing on lebron and chris bosh has you know had to sacrifice his game for lebron james and whatnot and there's a lot of truth to that kevin durant may be wrong about a lot of things but what he said here was actually very truthful and very authentic i have to, I have to agree with him and it would not surprise me if the lakers don't get a, a top top tier star player like a Kawhi, who's been rumored to, to if he goes to la it would be the clippers not the lakers and other notable uh other notable uh, stars. It would not surprise me that if, if they don't go to to Lakers for that reason alone, because the media covers LeBron in in a, in a very different way. LeBron, is, look, I'm not saying LeBron is any criticism from, from media. He does get a lot of criticism from media, but I think there's a lot of people in the media, most notably Nick Wrights and the you know Shannon Sharps of the world, who do LeBron has no you know could do no wrong in their eyes, and you, you, they'll they'll fastly they'll, they'll just fast criticize the players playing with them, like Kevin Love or Chris Bosh or, you know, even Kyrie Irving to some degree before they would, they, would, they would make LeBron accountable for anything. And it, it, if, if Kevin Durant is saying that publicly, you know, like that, and Kevin Durant, look, I, again, I have, I've always had issues with Kevin Durant in the last couple of years with some things he says and the way he acts, but he's also, there's some truth in what he's saying here. If Kevin Durant is saying that publicly now, that it'd be hard for the Lakers to get a star player, then... Maybe there's some truth to that because maybe Kevin Durant, you get Durant's connected to a lot of players in the, in the NBA. Maybe he knows something about that some players who may want to go to LA but are apprehensive about playing this with LeBron James for that reason because of the reasons that he stated in his interview with, with the Beach Report. Um, it does make a lot of sense. I'm not gonna lie, it makes a lot of sense. So I don't know. Durant is not totally wrong in what he says there at all. In fact, I tend to agree with him. It is hard to play LeBron. Look, 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 look at the way Kevin Love was eviscerated the last couple of years. And, and I'm not saying Kevin Love was didn't deserve some of the, the, the criticism he got in Cleveland, but I mean, the, the media the media does sometimes go overboard for LeBron, and, and I think that's why a lot of times the, the people who who hate LeBron tend to go over the top with the hate. But that being said, it wouldn't be different if Michael Jordan. If, look, if the media today existed when Michael Jordan existed, it'd be the same thing. But the reason why Jordan doesn't get a lot of blame and stuff because the media wasn't as big as it was as it is now in 2018. If there was more, if there was social media, Facebook, and all this, all these little gadgets and everything else, and back in 1999 and back in 92, 93 when Jordan won titles, and you know back in 88, 89 when Jordan couldn't win titles, I mean he he would get overly criticized. 
it's it's about where we're at now as as a as, in the media and then where we are as as a just a society in general. Um, but yeah, LeBron does get a pass a lot from many people, but I think it's also twofold because LeBron also gets overly criticized by other people as well too. So it's it's a it's a balancing act when it comes to LeBron James. So um, you know Durant's not wrong there. He's not wrong there at all. So I, I tend to agree with, agree with him. Hey, what's up? Do you agree with Kevin Durant or not? Hey, come here. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. Uh, and I saw a report. I just saw, as I was live on here too, I saw a report that some source in Cincinnati was saying that Marvel Lewis might take two weeks off to decide his future in Cincinnati. Now, I've been saying for a few weeks now that I think this could be the end of the road of Marvel Lewis. Although, to be honest with you, Marvel Lewis has an excuse here. You lose Danny Dalton for the year, you lose AJ Green for most of the year, and now, not for the year now, but injuries, I mean, other than the Redskins, it hasn't, it hasn't been a team in the league that's been decimated by injuries like the Bengals. So, in a lot of ways, Marvel Lewis has a pass, because when they were healthy, they were playing really good football. Um, I mean, did a podcast on here um, titled The Bengals are interesting, but way back when, when they were like 2-0 or whatever, some, way back in September, of course, but... I, my prediction is that I think they'll fire you. I think either Marvel Lewis goes to the front office, or they fire Marvel Lewis, hire Hugh Jackson. People think they they, they fire Marvel Lewis, it's a clean house. You guys understand that the Bengals are, the Bengals are not a, not a attractive destination for coaches in general because Mike Brown does not really give a shit. The reason why Marvel Lewis has been, has been there so long is because like he doesn't want to pay another coach, and Marvel Lewis is willing to take what what he what he has in, in Cincinnati now. That's why he's empowered there. Um, no top tr- people say well, Mike McCarthy will go to Cincinnati. You really think Mike McCarthy goes to Cincinnati? Honestly, fuck no. I don't think so. I think anybody, any coach that's 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 done something, that's won a Super Bowl. I mean, that, that that that's a step backwards, Cincinnati, in my opinion. I mean, they don't have the best facilities in the world. I mean, they're not they're not very attractive to to to, to coaches in 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 the same way um, other places are. So that's part of the reason why Marvin Lewis has, has been in the last along so Cincinnati is because of the fact that he's the one guy willing to stay and put up with the bullshit with the front office. But I do think there is a there is a lot of uh, a lot of Bengal fans. Some I know. Some I some I see on social media that are just done Marvel Lewis, just done with him. So I, I think I think he'll either leave or he'll just uh, either leave with a fire, whatever the hell it is. Maybe he'll go to the front office. Maybe they'll hire Hugh Jackson as the, as the coach. He's familiar with the, with the, with the, with the place there. So uh, something to look at in the coming weeks when it gets to the end of the season. Okay, finally, I wanted to talk about dumb. Holiday political correctness. You know me. I'm. I, I tend. To, I'm a very middle road guy. I tend to be very fair to everybody. You know. I. I do believe in some things. You know that. You know, progressive things to some degree. You know, as long as it makes sense. You know, some of these things I'm seeing now on social media. First, last week he had a thing about some Cleveland radio station banning. You know, one of the holiday songs. Uh, uh, ba- is it baby? Um, your tonight. I forgot to name the song. So one of the songs uh, for the holidays that they ban, and apparently other stations have followed suit and banned with them, um, which is I, th- I think is ridiculous. Honestly, now to be fair, if they want to ban them, the, the song that's on them as a company, as a as a, as a capitalist number one. If they want to ban the if they ban the song, that's onto them. That's that's their their call. I'm just saying that is it a bit weird and a bit over the top that you you would cancel a song that. You might mm, that you might interpret as uh, sexist, which in all of, in all of ways it could be sexist actually, but we, it's also interpreted that way. I I, I never interpreted the song um, as as such. Uh, even my wife, who's a you know former left former liberal, I am, said that that's ridiculous. That, that the whole thing's ridiculous. You know, um, maybe I'm maybe it's cold. Maybe uh, it's cold tonight. That's the name of the song. That's the name of the song actually. Um, why, why ban it? I don't. I don't understand that. I just. I don't get it. You know, and it, it, every little thing. Like one person calls up the station and all of a sudden they ban the fucking song because it's, you know, it's not something you like. How about this? How about how about don't listen to the song? How about you? Have, you live in America. You have options. If you don't like something, don't do it or don't watch it. You have options. You know, and then, then they're saying Rudolph Rudolph Reynolds Reynolds yeah, Rudolph Reynolds Ray there is also anti-bullying. Which it kind of is in a lot of ways, but it's also kind of showing, getting you know, getting over, you know, overcoming bullying, for, for that matter. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's just 
ridiculous. Everybody, everybody's in, in their feelings now, and it's, it's 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 too much now. But again, if you don't like something, don't watch it. If you don't like to listen to something, don't listen to it. You have options. I, I just don't I, don't. I don't get it. You know, just because you feel that way doesn't mean we have to suffer for that. You know, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, look, look if something is blatantly racist or blatantly, you know, you know, blatantly sexist, of course, that's obvious or that's criminal. Obviously, that's a different story. But this is this, this is stuff that's interpreted as such. Like, I never, I never, I never interpreted that way. So does it make does your feelings over tr- Trump's mind? That that's I, I don't get that. So, all right, you done? You want to get off of this now? Logan, say bye. Logan, say bye. Logan, say bye. Hi. Say hey. Hi. <laughs> He's Hi. All right. Again, this podcast will be available on also in audio only on Earth with Unfiltered. We'll have uh, that available probably in the next two hours. Um, of course, it'll be on YouTube. Also, check out the YouTube page. I updated the YouTube page finally. Just type in Ernest Christian. Um, you'll see this show also, along with, as well as clips, and then the Ernest Christian podcast will be on there as well, too. So. All right, I am. I need more water. My mouth is dry. I gotta get out of here. I'm still kind of sick anyway. So, all right, guys, love you guys. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow.